let's look at the larger theme of building India. Atul. You know, you've been one of the early players in the space. You've also had a chance to benchmark what you're doing and gain skill sets which are among the best in the world. Now, if you were to look at even the emerging giants, because often parallels are drawn about the building work in a nation, like the Asian Tigers did in the 80s. You had uh, China doing in different tranches over the period. How far back are we? And if we were to look at saying that, let's try and sort out what we have, because everybody agrees we need to build up, what needs to be done? We would probably be about 20 to 25 years behind these countries, clearly. Really? Um, and the other worry is that everything here is happening in a disjointed kind of manner. National highways may have an aggressive program and they may have had some success over the last 10 years. But then you look at this urban infrastructure. Okay, so you have a highway and then you come into a small, you know, set of city roads which, oh, now we have to build a flyover because there's a choke point here. You know, it, there's nothing uh, like a master plan where you say, if this comes, it's going to result in this, so we need to do this and this together at the same time to prevent what seems to be infrastructure that's built up that's only resulted in greater bottlenecks. So that is, is one of the major uh, uh, shortcomings on the Indian side. Sure. But you know, wherever you look, we, we don't have a lack of plans, Atul. Every city has a 2020 plan. Yeah. Every uh, you know infrastructure vertical has a 2020 or a 2050 plan. Where is the gap? I mean, are, are these plans uh, far out in terms of practicality or, or is it the implementation? It's the implementation, clearly the implementation. The planning, as you said, there's a lot of planning done, okay, but at the end of the day, some interest group will come by saying, realign this highway a little bit this side or, you know, this flyover is going in front of my house, no, no, make it half the size. Now that's resulted in the recent controversy that's going on. You know, what are we doing? So we need to be able to take a completely holistic approach and saying, okay, sit with everybody put them in the room, create a committee with people that represent all the different uh, uh, interest groups, right? And take their words seriously. Don't look at like contractors in India are really at the bottom end of the food chain. All the problems of delays on land acquisition, financing, uh, late approval of engineering drawings and all that are all dumped on the contractor. Then the contractor says, look, guys, sitting here for the six months more has cost me so much. Oh, no, no, no. You first complete the project, then we'll talk, otherwise you're going to call your bank guarantee. I mean, you hear such uh, you don't hear this anywhere else in the world. Okay, Let, let's dissect the problem. One part of the problem is the multiplicity of departments. You refer to it, the multiplicity of governments, departments, and it becomes a hugely complex maze. How can you, you know, clear a bit of that? Create, look, in the same public sector, you have shining examples of great project delivery like the Metro. Okay, the same public sector, you have the oil companies that build projects to schedule, to high quality. You have ONGC that does a great job, okay? They're also public sector, okay? A large amount of private sector capabilities have been built on the back of public sector uh, individuals. You look at insurance, you look at banking, you look at telecoms, you can go down the list. Almost everyone started out bringing in somebody from the PSU. So the people are all in place, right? But the environment that you've created for them to do their job efficiently doesn't exist. You have a common refrain that I hear is uh, if I sign this file, uh, tomorrow I'll be questioned. They'll dig me out from my grave and keep asking me questions. Please, I know it's your money, but refer it to arbitration. Whatever they say, we'll pay you. So nobody's willing to put pen to paper. So the issue is when you give somebody who's competent the responsibility, the autonomy, like you did in the case of Delhi Metro, right? It's possible to do it. So I'm not for a minute suggesting that the, the competence of the individuals in the public sector is in question. It's not. In fact, they're probably more qualified than anybody you'll find in the private sector. You look at the aluminum companies, the steel companies, they're all running on public sector competence. But all that the private sector has done is give them an environment in which they can truly function and show what they're worth. So you need to fix that environment in a manner that works for everybody together. You know, the other problem is finance and the fact that we've not really reached a mature level of avenues of financing. It's still very, very traditional old world bank financing, yeah. you know, and you worked in other markets. What needs to be done to get that financing? Because a lot is riding on private public partnership. If you look across uh, the investment and the infrastructure landscape. Yeah, I think India is probably the only country in the world that has outsourced its, almost all its highway program to the private sector. It's unheard of anywhere in the world. And yes, a lot of the companies that took BOT projects, we fortunately took a conservative approach and didn't. But those that did, uh, you know, based a lot of their projections based on 6% interest rate. Okay, classic loans, long-term loans. 
Now suddenly it's up to 11, 12, 13 percent. How can those projects stay viable? So you need to find innovative ways. There's tons of different uh, instruments that are available globally that finance infrastructure in other countries, right? We don't need to reinvent the wheel, right? You can just pick and choose out of the menu that's available as to what works in India and just bring those into But it's play. again not lack of funds because if you look at the infrastructure outlays that the government has promised, I mean, they run into trillions of rupees, you know, and there's such a lot of talk of big numbers. Why aren't we seeing it translated in, a, in stressed out times and why do we face the stress that we do today? I said it's a bunch of all little things. It's the right of way, it's the environment clearance, it's the tree cutting approval, it's the, you know, uh, place sensitive uh, building in the middle of the alignment. It's uh, getting approved to move power lines, it's getting moved to your uh, telecom uh, lines, or there's a gas line running, you need to get that shifted. You're talking to 25 different people. And each person suddenly feels that this is his moment in the sun, okay? And then, you know, as contractors, you've got to do your, please, sir. Okay. So that's got to change. My question to you, Atul, is that everybody agrees that building India is important. But right now, everybody who's building India is facing stress, okay? Because you have existing investments which are stuck. You have big plans ahead. The projections are huge. I mean, the new five-year plan has multiple, uh, you know, um, uh, investment uh, needs, okay? And look at power. I don't know which Indian company will be able to invest in power in the next leg. So how do we clear the mess going forward? If you were to say that let's, let's clear the track and get investment going again. As I said, you need to resolve the problem by looking at all the issues of all the stakeholders and create an environment that is really going to allow people to function. Look, Indians have built almost the entire Middle East. The world class infrastructure is there. You know, 50 to 60 percent of the workforce, whether it's engineers, whether it's workers, tradesmen, craftsmen, drivers, operators, are from India, from the Indian subcontinent, right? So the ability exists for people to deliver world class projects, okay, um, in a world class time period. It happens. In the oil and gas side, in India, okay, the same thing exists. It's when you get into these urban municipalities and all these different uh, uh, niggles that you get, and now it's escalated in the power side up to the ministries, between environment and between mining and between finance and, you know, these various different uh, players in, in, in there, each one with, you know, whatever, uh, uh, as a self, moment in the sun uh, experience. You know, we need to put them all together. Maybe just make one infrastructure ministry that overrides everything. When you watch a clip about India or a photograph about India, it's never about the great stuff. It's always about the worst things.